have for today is we know that we need to adjust the orbit uh, to stay above 1250 kilometers. And something that we need to do is go ahead and model this. Um, I'm most familiar with GMAT the, from NASA. It's an open source mission analysis tool. It's pretty cool. But there's lots of other choices. So what I'm looking for, and I put the word out, is uh, help with getting uh, possible orbits into GMAT um, or whatever people prefer. And then we can, what that will do is it'll, it'll allow us to update the slide that has um, has the orbit information in it and to recalculate the delta V, which is vital for uh, pretty much everything. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, engine repository. I did not see, I don't see the engine repository work published yet. And then the final thing that I have um, is the uh, final specific thing that I have is to talk about the high level communications architecture block diagram. So we do have one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show, I'll put the presentation up here. And here is our, I'm leaping ahead to page 12. This is the original block diagram and it has a lot of information on it. What we need to do is, is, is update this uh, a bit. And what I've added to the to the deck for this week is here's a functional block diagram for just is just the communications part, um, radio part. And it has four different boards. We have a, a what we call a, a TTNC board, transceiver board uh, for telemetry and control. And then the C band and the X band uh, receiver and transmitter. Now this was assuming uh, five gigahertz and 10 gigahertz. Um, the proposal that we are, are working with assumes 10 and 24. And the feedback that we've gotten over the past week is to please consider um, the uh, QO100 frequencies as well. So we have plenty of decision making to do. And um, it, every additional frequency that we support makes it more complicated, of course. Uh, but there's nothing stopping us from, from picking from, from those four different recommended frequencies. And then the board on the left is the, um, we call it the FPGA processor board. It's essentially a digital board. The, the thing about this, uh, this was developed by Dr. Christopher Bridges and me, and then a, a whole bunch of other people, is that it has this switch. There's a switch in the transceiver board or the TTNC board. Uh, and there's a, a switch down at the um, X-band transmitter board and um, those are those are interesting because these these switches allow you to fail in a way that if the um, uh, if the digital part um, failed, if you had some sort of catastrophic failure of the digital part, what's supposed to happen is that uh, it it detects that that's gone, and and switches it over to where the communications resources are still there. Um, so it's um, essentially a, a, a simpler transponder. Um, and so COVID slowed down the process of testing this uh, in the lab, but with this particular proposal, um, you know, with, with us working on it, um, I think that we should revive the, the test, the demonstration of the switches uh, in place, RF switches, and, and show the failover mode. So that's, that's probably the, the thing that, that uh, that is most uh, unique about this particular architecture. So uh, otherwise, without the, the failover mode, it's a pretty straightforward um, digital multiplexing transverter or transponder. The orbit part, I added um, a page for for orbit for North America, but I, I put the mission orbit for, for Japan first. We talked about that last week. This is the part that we'll need GMAP for. I reached out to uh, AMSAT DL for help with GMAT because they've helped in the past with the orbits for uh, the, the lunar missions. The main part of what we've done over the past week is to really look kind of hard at the architecture and start start putting that in and um, and soliciting feedback about frequencies. I think that was a great suggestion. It, it had not really occurred to me that that we might want to do that, but it's uh, it makes total sense. There's a lot of really good equipment and designs out there 
for QO100 and a, a, a lot of people. Uh, so, uh, I have a question on the uh, on the QO100. Uh, sure. Is, is it that uh, FM, however, uh, that they use for the uh, for the QO100 comms? Um, well, it's a the downlink is um, is a DVBS2 downlink. Uh, but so, or there is a DVBS2 um, downlink available. The the way that I understand it is that it's a, a linear transponder. Just All curious right. on, on on the orbit. Uh, do you suspect uh, any extensive uh, eclipse periods uh, with a high elliptical orbit, or or is that I'm not as familiar with that. But um, of course, in a circular uh, lower altitude orbit, that'd be significant. But I was just curious on the uh, on, on the kind of elliptical orbit and that you really. Uh, uh, it is considered a, uh, any extensive periods of time. Yeah, yes. that's a good question. I, I'm not uh, an expert on orbital mechanics. I don't think so uh, because of the way that it that it that it looks in simulations. Uh, so, I, so I don't know, but I, I don't think so. We'll generally spend most of our time at the high high altitude uh, and then swoop down to uh, hopefully 1250 or higher and then back up and stay stay at a high altitude for longer um, and that's that's about it that's what <laughs> for, that's, that is the the a good limit of of what i know about about the orbit um do, do you the, other if, than uh, i was just going to ask you do you recall if any other uh uh ham uh radio satellites have had uh, similar orbits or are they have they yes. been mostly just circular in in the past we have had uh HEO missions, and there's actually there's a slide in here that shows them a nice slide of the of the history. So so you can see the name of the the satellite and the the year it was was launched and what they looked like. Oh, so these okay. are all high you know higher orbit um, satellites. These are right. you know so so the answer is uh, is yes. It's been done before, and it's about time that we should do it again and there's been so many advances in uh, I agree. all <laughs> sorts of technology it's uh you know so so i think that we can we can achieve this it's uh we've done it before and we should we should be doing it again these you know very popular and and a completely different experience uh communicating on these compared to to leo is there a, a general timeline when, when this might uh, possibly be launched or or is this just very early in the planning stages? This is pretty pretty early, I would say, and that would be completely up to the the organization that that accepted the proposal. Um, so what we're we're hoping to do is to provide as much horsepower as we possibly can on the R and D side, and you know with with engineering volunteers and um, and prototyping and developing and you know learning and producing things that that can survive in space that's that's our goal uh for, in terms of like launches and and things like that we look towards uh, the, you know we will be submitting this to jamsat the japanese amsat organization it's it's intended to be presented to them and if they decide to to accept it then uh the, the securing a, a launch and 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 telling us what we need to do in order to to help uh, with that uh, that would be their their responsibility their choice and we'd, we'd just help uh, however we can, and uh, you know, despite uh, challenges with COVID, we've we've had a, a pretty good uh, run of of successes here lately. There's been some setbacks, of course, um, but the downlink part um, is is coming together for the digital board, and the propulsion part is is coming together with some some good good engineering. That's uh, the the electric motors that we're looking at are or the electric propulsion that we're looking at is flown twice before, you know, advance that design just a little bit more because um, what we're, we're going to do is to um, show that the electric propulsion is is very compatible with, with broadband communications because uh, we, we have a method to synchronize the, the engines. So that's exciting. That's a, it's a pretty cool thing. And we're uh, very fortunate that we uh, have this opportunity and want to take full advantage of it. The thing that we don't 
yet have uh, that we didn't have last week and we still don't have this week is um, any real uh, human resources that can do thermal. <laughs> so this is right. uh, not unusual because it's a uh, it's in the amateur satellite community. Thermal design has been pr been pretty shorthanded on thermal design. It's it's very specialized, and we're extremely been extremely lucky in the past to have a few people that were very competent at it and and donated their time. And we don't have anybody um, that I would say was an expert in in thermal design, and that'll be kind of a big deal. We're talking about a, you know, so we're talking about a six U spacecraft, and uh, it's you got to pack everything in there and really have to be careful about about thermal design so that's that's something that i've i'm working to try to to identify people we do have a, a volunteer who is willing to to give it a shot um it's it's something that's going to need um some some i think some expert attention or, or review early and often to figure out if it'll, if it'll work so that's that's something i'm I think I'm probably most concerned about the the thermal and the me mechanical part, since in general, what what we do at ORI is um, digital communications. So the communication side of it, I think we're we're coming along. The downlink is uh, took some big steps forward just over the past few months, and the uplink has is starting to to come along too. That's rapidly coming together. They meet in the middle in the scheduler or the the multiplexer. And so far, that exists on a whiteboard. But you know, with with something to feed it and and something to transmit, um, you know that that part will will be much more fun. We'll, we're looking at like doing quality of service and multiplexing based on the type of traffic and uh, adaptive coding and modulation to include that. Um, and the authorization and authentication stuff has been uh, so started to publish and circulate that to try to get some really good reviews and that's come along quite a, quite a ways. We'll have a poster session about that at Ham Expo. Uh, I, uh, I was wondering on the, uh, on the uh, thrusters and propulsion side, uh, the way I understand it, these would be almost like some type of a uh, plasma discharge type uh, situation. Uh, has that been looked at before with any potential interference in terms of the uh, communications or the- uh, mm -hmm. It the does system? interfere. It will, it, that's what I hear. That, uh, I've been assured that yes, they will interfere. And probably the the I mean obviously the solution is either you can either you can fire your 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 engines or you can you can communicate. Um, so so what we're we're doing is um, is synchronizing the the engines in a particular way that allows more communications to happen. Be, so that's uh I think that's pretty exciting. We'll be able to demonstrate that with a a build of the of the motors and then, um, you know, a co-located communications transmitter. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping to, um, to build soon and to show. So there's ground testing that uh, proposed or? or yes, I think that that would, out? yes, I think that would be, you know, well, to me, it's, uh, it doesn't work until you test it live over the air. So yes, we right. would build all this stuff up. I think we'll be okay. It it will. None of this is easy. Things worth doing rarely are. Um, but we'll be in we'll be in good shape. If we could get to the point where we're doing so much of this work that we we need a, to build our own uh, chamber, then that'd be a raging success. And I would I would think good for us. I don't anticipate that because you know when when Jan King um, talks about this particular. Uh, this proposal, this idea of of, of HEO, he he really does think of it as a small uh, fleet or, or essentially a constellation. So, in his mind, we need as a as an amateur satellite service, we really need to have multiple um, multiple HEOs, and you know maybe you know, three or four, and that would give you uh, global coverage. And you know, after thinking about this for for a bit, it's really not. Not that unreasonable to say, yeah, let, let's go for three or four. And then, of course, Jan explains that you need six or seven because you need to have spares. And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> so it would be nice. Uh, but you know what? One would be uh, a huge victory and a oh, huge. Well. So talk, we'll... to, talk to Elon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, I, I uh, as a member of the Planetary Society, I, I uh, uh, was actually able to, to participate a little bit on their, their light sail uh, yeah. satellite and was able I to actually uh, pick up some of their, their telemetry signals on, on, the, uh, on the light sail that they had. And, and so I thought that's such an innovative idea of using the, uh, the light propulsion with, uh, with the lights. And of course, it's kind of a specialized uh, propulsion system that, that maybe, maybe requires something more experimental than probably better, better tried and true uh, thruster systems that, uh, that are used in, in satellites. But, uh, but gosh, that would be a nice thing in the far future to maybe have something that would uh, provide that kind of uh, uh, ability. Uh, yeah, no, I'm familiar with light sail. That's that's really really neat. Yeah, I guess it, it's still functional, so that's that's wonderful. Uh, it is. I don't I don't think it's supposed to last beyond this year. I think it's probably uh, re-entering sometime towards the end of the year. But uh, that was that was a great project for them. Indeed. All well, right. Looking think... forward to uh, continuing uh, the the pro seeing the the continuation of the progress here. Uh, that sounds oh, really thanks. interesting. Yeah, no, we are. It, there has been progress, and I will. There probably won't be over the next week. Not very much. We will be talking about this project at the Aerospace Village at DEF CON. So there's lots of satellite people there, and they're friendly. Um, so what I'll do is I'll print print this out and and have a binder at our uh, exhibit in RF Radio Frequency Village, uh, but also take one over to Aerospace Village and talk it over with them. Um, but I don't, since, since we're going to be traveling for almost all the next week, so there, there may not be a lot of updates or edits, uh, for, for the meeting next week, but there will be lots of feedback, which is, uh, really crucial at this particular stage to get as much feedback as possible about the things that are, that are in the deck, you know, but the next week should have, should have a lot of feedback and then the sorting through and figuring out, um, you know, what's important prioritizing all the different feedback that we get uh, and hopefully some contacts and some some additional uh, you know volunteers and 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 resources so that's what I'm after uh, for the next week great well thanks for the update sure happy to do it thank you Jim <laughs> that means a lot uh, we'll rotate the meeting around uh, to different time zones um, but yeah. I'm I'm happy. Thanks so much for the for coming and and looking at the the progress from the last week, and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll have plenty to to share from the from the show. <laughs>